The number one thing you should be doing right now to prepare and get ready for AI on top of your business intelligence is to go and optimize your semantic models and data sources. So what do I mean by optimize your, your data for the purposes of AI, for your semantic models and your data sources? So we put together a white paper on the subject. Now, Microsoft also has a bunch of really good material on this topic. So, and, and what I'm about to say about this topic really applies to any application of AI with your data and business intelligence sources. It doesn't really matter which kind of tool you're gonna to be using uh, for that, but the, the same practices apply with respect to your data and using it for AI purposes. So, I'm going to share my screen, show you what I'm talking about here. We have a, a white paper. I'll make that white paper white paper available in the uh, description below, so you can check it out. You can download it, and you can you can read it. But really, when we say get your data ready, we mean take your semantic model and humanize it. Your semantic model matters more than it ever has before. And why it matters so much is in the past, your semantic model was kind of sitting in the background. There wasn't a lot, you know, the end user wasn't interacting with that semantic model directly. They were interacting with the report that you put on top of it. So you could get away with some, you know, bad data practices or improper naming conventions because you could always name them, you know, at the visual layer or something. But with your semantic model and your, your other data sources, it becomes extremely important that the data model itself is optimized and it's human humanize and that's the first point here to humanize your semantic models in your data sources that simply means renaming columns something that makes sense to a human uh, you know getting rid of your column headers that are you know column underscore one two three and replacing it with an actual natural language header something like sales amount uh, as an example the same goes for your actual data tables themselves so what you call that table uh, within your model, give it a name that uh, that a human would understand what's actually in that table. So that's really that second point around that clear and consistent naming conventions a human would understand. And that's very critically important because the AI agent and the LLM model is going to need to understand what the prompt is and how to interpret that from the data. And it needs to be able to understand that with the actual naming uh, convention within your model. So third point, Designing an intuitive data model. So here I'm saying ideally star schema. Now, what we mean by that is a simple data model is always going to be better for AI. If you have a very complex data model uh, with Snowflake schema as an example and a lot of, you know, connected tables and, and, uh, and so forth, the AI is going to have a harder time interpreting the data within that. So if you have a very simple uh, laid out star schema data model with fact tables and dimension tables, uh, it may even make sense to actually condense your data model and denormalize it even further to make it easier for the uh, AI and the LLMs to understand what's actually going on in that data model. So optimizing your me measures and calculations, same, that's kind of the same idea as we talked about earlier of that clear and consistent naming convention. In this case, we're basically saying the same has to be true at your measure level. So clear naming conventions, clear DAC statements that you know it could easily be understand by the LLM, or clear SQL statements if you're using a you know SQL database or something as a, as an input as a, an input. Uh, and most importantly is the idea of metadata within your uh, within your data tables and semantic models and SQL databases and such so forth. By metadata, you know, quite simply, we mean things like synonyms and field descriptions. So giving additional information to the model that explains what that column is, again, in a human terms, you know, sales amount, column header with a description saying, you know, this column contains all of the sales data from our sales operations. Um, as an example, you know, the additional information like, uh, you know, the type of data that's in that column, the, you know, what should be expected in terms of, um, you know, if, if that value going up is a good thing or going down is a bad thing, that type of description would help the LLM and the AI understand the context of that data. So again, this is a very in-depth topic. There's a lot to do, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just you have to humanize your data model for the purposes of AI. Hope that helped everyone. And by all means, check out our white paper or go uh, check out some of the available resources from Microsoft on the subject. Um.